Hello everyone, welcome to Study A Tech. In the previous video, we have seen how to calculate ripple factor and voltage regulation. In this video, we will learn how to calculate the efficiency and transformer utilization factor. These two terms are quite similar, but there is a clear difference between these two that needs to be understood clearly. First, we will see how to calculate the efficiency. We all know the definition of the efficiency is equal to the output DC power divided by the input AC power. As the output is DC side, so I wrote the output DC power and as the input side is the AC side, so I wrote the input AC power. We have seen this waveform earlier where this blue line represents the output voltage and this green line represents the current. We have considered here resistive load. 0 to pi in the positive half cycle, we get the voltage and current in the output and from pi to 2 pi, we do not get any output voltage. From the definition of the efficiency, we can write eta equal to I DC square into R load divided by I RMS square into R load into 100, right? Later on, we will see this will come to be 40.5, okay? Now the I DC can be written as I DC equal to V DC by R load and the I RMS can be written as V RMS by R load. Now, if I put the value of I DC and RMS, R load has already been cancelled out. We will get some expression. Now in the expression of IDC, we can put the value of VDC. And in the expression of IRMS, we can put the value of VRMS. The value of VDC and the value of VRMS, we have already seen how to calculate. If you haven't watched those videos, kindly watch them. Because seriously, if you watch, the whole thing will be better to understand. Now putting all these values, we can calculate the value of eta. And that will come to be... 40.5%. This is simple calculation all of you can do, right? So the point to remember from here that in case of half wave rectifier, the efficiency is 40.5. Now we will learn what is transformer utilization factor. The definition of the transformer utilization factor is quite similar to the efficiency but not exactly same. And the definition is output DC power divided by AC rating of the transformer. In case of efficiency, it was the output DC power divided by the input AC power. But here the denominator is changed in case of transformer utilization factor. This is the AC rating of the transformer. And we know that the rating of transformer is given in KVA. So we will take here that KVA or VA rating here. So in the expression of transformer utilization factor, the DC output power can be written as VDC into IDC. And the AC rating of the transformer can be written as VRMS into RMS, right? Now we can put the value of VDC and we can put the value of IDC and the value of VRMS and the value of IRMS can be written as VM by root 2 and IM by 2. So you can see there is a difference why this is so. This needs to be understood clearly. Look at the half wave rectifier circuit. We see that this is the V in and this is the diode and this is the load. Now the waveform of V in is this one in the positive half cycle, in the negative half cycle, whatever it is, there is the voltage, right? The voltage waveform will always be there. So this voltage will be the sinusoid as the input voltage. Now in the positive half cycle only, we get the current, the red one. So we get the current here, right? In the negative half cycle, this is off. We don't get any current here. So there is a difference between the voltage here and the current here, okay? So the voltage is pure sinusoid and the current is half wave rectified waveform. Now, as because the V in is the pure sinusoid, so its RMS will be Vm by root 2. You can calculate the RMS value of a sinusoidal waveform is nothing but Vm by root 2. Now, the current waveform is a half wave rectified waveform and already we have seen earlier how to calculate the RMS value of any half wave rectified waveform. There we calculated in terms of voltage which came to be Vm by 2. But as because this is current waveform, so it will be Im by 2. So that is why the secondary of the transformer VA rating will be VRMS into IRMS, which is nothing but Vm by root 2 and Im by 2. Now, this VA rating will be similar to the VA rating in the primary side because whenever the current flows here, only the current flows here. In the negative half cycle, no current flows here, no current flows in the primary side also. That is why the VA rating of this side and VA rating of this side will be same. But in case of full wave rectifier, in the next few lectures, we will see 
there will be difference in the secondary VA rating and the primary VA rating. We will see later on. Now from this simple calculation, we can calculate the TUF, the transformer utilization factor will be 0 0.286. So what is the physical significance of transformer utilization factor? Let us say this is 100 kilowatt. So what the transformer rating will be required? If we know the value of transformer utilization factor, from here by back calculation, we can find out the AC rating of the transformer to be 100 kilowatt by 0 0.286. From there, you can calculate the rating of the transformer. Now, there are two things that we need to remember. That is the peak inverse voltage. Peak inverse voltage is the voltage appearing across the diode when this diode is off. So this is the equivalent circuit of the half wave rectifier in the negative half cycle. If this is the input voltage, when this device is off or the diode is off, we say the negative voltage is appearing across it, right? Because negative is appearing at the anode, positive is appearing at the cathode. So if we measure the voltage of anode with respect to cathode, so it will be negative. So the maximum negative voltage the diode faces is minus Vm. So the peak inverse voltage for the diode is Vm. Though it is minus Vm, but you can remember this is equal to Vm. The next is output frequency. If the input frequency is 50 Hz, the output frequency of the half wave rectifier will also be 50 Hz. You can look at the waveform of the half wave rectifier output voltage, then you can conclude the input frequency and the output frequency are same. Hope you like the video. Study it is dedicated to you and our motto is to make a complete platform to all the electrical engineering students. We need a little bit support from your side Subscribe to our channel, follow our Facebook page and visit our website. Thank you. See you in the next video.